1968 Coochie. That's a C-130 that's getting ready to take off. That's a Chinook CH-47 from Geronimo's. Just an overhead shot of him flying, coming in to Fuloy. And that's the C-130. He's actually backing up reverse thrust of the... he got to get as much runway available so he can take off as possible. And now he'll take off and away we go. Don't know where he's going, but he's going somewhere. Fuloy was a pretty good sized air base. We, uh, we had over a hundred helicopters at Fuloy and a long runway. That runway is about a mile long. So it's 5,000 feet plus. That's a UH, that's a Huey, a UH-1C or H background Chinook landing. Kind of funny, they land just like a plane. Tail down first, then the front wheels go down, and then when he gets, he's going into a hover, I don't know what he's doing. Just to get himself further down the runway, I guess. Maybe he's going to take off. I don't know. So that's a Huey Cobra gunship. They're really narrow. They're only about 38 inches wide. So you, that's another Chinook coming in for a landing. Yeah, so he's coming in to land. He'll hover around and fool around. He'll turn and get himself lined up so he could... Uh, right rear wheel, although you couldn't see it. There's only one steering wheel when you're on the ground, and it's the right rear wheel. And he steers by a little dial on the cockpit. Kind of a strange way of doing it, but it works pretty good. So you just taxi it around and drive it around like a car. That's another that's another Huey just coming in. If we had close up you could see that these he's got uh guns on both sides. Okay, we got hit one night and this is uh showing one of the uh uh with the rockets and mortars and that's just the white things on the on the wall or holes in the wall that the and he might go out there. I don't know why. Oh yeah, and I scroll up here. The you can see the holes in the end of the hooch. The white the white holes above the door. Got hit by rockets and mortars, and that's what look the wall looks like from the inside. <laughs> and it hit some. It hit the latrine. There's holes in the latrine. And that's a picture of the hooch I lived in. And that particular rocket and mortar only hit 38 feet from where I was laying. So the guys are working on the helicopter. That's the aft pylon, aft transmission, probably changing the oil, checking it out, other things. This is a blade tracking. That's a piece of tape on the end of each blade is a color. There's three blades and you put that uh, little F-shaped uh, thing up there and it tells you, it touches the ends of the blades while the blades are running around and that tells you whether the blades are flying in a flat circle, which they're supposed to do. Uh, that's a uh, sheet metal shop. That's a picture of the forward rotor head. Uh, those are they're fold down work platforms that you don't have to get a ladder to get up onto. You just fold them down, climb up the side of the ship. There's handholds and side of the ship and foot places to put your feet. And that's just uh, Chinook taxiing into a revetment. Those are the things. This is Rex Terry. He's a buddy of mine. He was an other machinist. He was from Michigan. And that's a, the right trailer was a right truck was a machine shop trailer just kind of a scroll of the revetments or these are 
These helicopters are backed into these revetments to be worked on 100 RPA and other things. This is a section charge and I don't know why. That's a Freedom Bird. That's a plane going back to, that's back to Rex. I don't know what he's doing there. Looks like he's, yeah, he's making an ashtray out of a 155 millimeter shell. <laughs> that's, that's a, they're changing the rotor blade. That rotor blade weighs about 470 pounds, so with four guys, that's a pretty good uh, heavy lift. And that's how we changed the rotor blade. We had a little lift crane down the back of a truck and bring it around in there, and then you put the rotor blade in there, and then he's gonna put a, he's putting a pin in there. There's a great big diameter pin, and it doesn't go in real easy sometimes, but you gotta jerk move it around a little bit so you get that pin all the way down in there and that's you that's how you do it <laughs> got a rope to move the blade up and down just pictures of Chinook's landing he's still pulling on the blade must not have it in yet <laughs> that's a loach it's a light observation helicopter it's the little tiny thing it only holds two people that's back to blade tracking. Blade tracking is a little bit of a, uh, it's, it's tough because the, you got to stand on top of that ladder to get there. That's yours truly there walking across there. That's me doing the same thing. That's, that's a real tricky thing because that rotor blade's going around 230 RPM and you got to put that little strip of uh, tape up there to catch the little mark that you made on the end of the blade to the blade is the three blades have to fly in a circle within a, about an well, about a half inch of being perfectly off three of them flying in the same plane so there's a lot of wind going up there and then you got to climb up there and hold that f shape uh, blade tracker tape later on and we didn't have these when we were there they had an electronic blade track and you didn't have to do that anymore but you can kind of see the blade and then you can see it's a little tricky deal mm -hmm. then you go up and you see where the, the three blades it makes a little mark on the tape and you, and you go up and adjust it so they all fly in the same plane inside that's looking uh, towards the cockpit I have no idea where this is <laughs> <laughs> but it's just pictures of us flying we're at about 3,000 feet there and that's uh, where the pilot and the co-pilot sit, looking out the front. Um, don't know where this is, don't recognize it. Oh, that's, that's Fuloy from, from the air, and those are just revetments. We had 12, 12 helicopters in, the, uh, in our company. We had as many as 16. And that's wire to prevent the them from sh the perimeter wire. They're demolishing a uh, bunker there. I'm not sure why. Probably because it was old and a couple years old and then they just kind of disintegrate in the ground. They dissolve when it rains and it rains a lot there. <laughs> so somebody going off on a mission someplace. What sort of camera were you using? I had a Canon Super 8 millimeter camera that I bought over there. That's just another Huey coming in. A lot of air traffic there with over over 100 helicopters at Fuloi. Okay, that's Kuchi in August of 69. They came through the wire and they, at Kuchi and they blew up 16 Chinook helicopters. This is the two days after that happened. We tried to get in there the first day, but they wouldn't let us. That's just an overhead view of Fuloi. 
Anyway, they blew up 16 Chinook helicopters that night. They came in through the wire, and Coochie has tunnels underneath the uh, ground, and the VC came up through that and dropped satchel charges into the all, all 16 helicopters. So at a million, do million and a half dollars a pop, that's a lot of money and uh, devastation. Those round circle holes there are bomb craters from B-52s. Um, B-52s are the kind of the silent killer. All of a sudden, you see a whole boatload of holes in a line. Don't know where there. You see a lot of bomb craters there, yeah. the round holes. Yeah. Yeah. That looks to be like a rubber plantation, and they had. That's a favorite place to hide for the VC. Don't know where that is. That probably. There's lots and lots of rivers that run into the Mekong River that join up near Saigon. And so that's that's actually an airstrike to Puff White. So you might see, and I, these are not good pictures, but that was a Phantom, F-4 Phantom made a bomb. And you see the smoke in the middle of the picture. That's what, that devastation, that's a, makes a strafing run in there. It'll be 100, 200 yards wide and a quarter mile long where anybody that survives that strafing run as far as the enemy goes or the Viet Cong, why it's amazing that they survive. That's a sling load. Not sure what it is. It's in crates. We can lift about 9,000 pounds and fly off with it at 150 or 60 miles an hour, pretty easy. And that's how we haul things. We can haul about 9,000 pounds inside, or it's easier to do Chinook as a sling load. That's a Huey. That's a strange little deal. They had a bunch of helicopter rotor blades stuck sideways through the helicopter, and they were transporting it someplace. Huey can lift a Oh, six or eight, ten people. There's another airstrike in the distance. I'm not sure what that is. Did you know the airstrikes were going to be there, or was that just a lucky... S sometimes. Sometimes you would know that the strikes were... Sometimes you'd hear it over the radio, you know, you know recording it, something or such and such. And that's actually full oil and destruction of the part of it. kind of go from one place to another. I, I, that's the, uh, oh, this is water buckets. I had a hand in this thing. That water buckets were used to put out fires. So you'd sling them underneath the helicopter and I worked on that thing. Um, that's an OV-1 Mohawk. That's a reconnaissance plane. That's a twin engine turbocharged uh, turboprop. Thought maybe we'd get a close up of a of a Chinook with a we have a Geronimo's in, emblem on the painted on the nose of the helicopter. <laughs> Indian head. Maybe not politically correct in this day and age, but then it was just fine. The Chinook, they can fly forwards, backwards, sideways, doesn't matter. They sit and pivot in one place. Yeah, you can see the emblem on the front of the helicopter there, red. So on a, on a Chinook, we, are, we were armed. We had two M60 Model D machine guns on the helicopter. One, on, one was the right gun, one was the left gun. Right gun was usually done, was usually armed by... That's a Huey Cobra gunship. The right gun was usually uh, manned by the crew chief, and the left gun was a dedicated gunner. So we had a pilot, co-pilot, flight engineer, crew chief, and a gunner on each Chinook. M60 D model, D model machine gun. Uh, not a real rapid fire. Thing, not like a minigun that shoots 2,000 rounds a minute, but um, and we didn't have any on our shooks. 
There's somebody out there with a... I don't know what he's doing. Probably a test flight. See, he goes sideways. He goes in a circle. Probably a test flight after a 100-hour uh, PE or preventive uh, maintenance uh, downtime. You take the helicopter almost completely apart. And then you take it out there and try to make sure everything works right. And if it does, well, then you're, that's your test flight and you're... You sign it off, she's good good to go then. There's a bird dog behind it that's a airplane. And eh, just a guy flying around someplace, going somewhere, doing something. On the tail of the Chinook you see there's a three stripes there and that was our company insignia for the two oh fifth assault support helicopter company. We were called the Geronimos of Vietnam. You mentioned it raining a lot. Was it uh, warm as well? Oh, yeah. It was about 90, 95 every day. <laughs> and about 85% humidity all the time. Year round. You had a monsoon season and a rainy season and uh, a dry season too. That's a loach. That's a light observation helicopter. Looks like a tadpole. It's not much bigger than that. It only holds four people. <laughs> They're really fast and, and incredibly maneuverable. You can practically turn the thing on its ear to just incredibly uh, maneuverable. Most of these were H model uh, Hueys. Uh, which was their latest model. There was a Huey company right beside us. Although you can't see it from these pictures, there is Hueys like that. They have two M60D model machine guns, one on each side. And they hold six or eight people depending on what they're going to be doing. Some of them don't have any guns on them. They call them slicks and that's for uh, dropping in a bunch of people at, uh, for some sort of a LZ landing zone. These things fly kind of funny because they to start going forward they, the front end comes up first and then the tail end comes up and then to get someplace they got to dip the nose and they fly with the nose down when they first start off and then they level it off in pretty level flight. It's That's an OV-1 Mohawk light observation helicopter little turbine engine job. They're pretty fast. They're equipped with a whole bunch of um, photography and reconnaissance gear, gear. That's a Huey Cobra gunship. They're only very narrow, very fast. They'll dive at about 250 miles an hour. And they're equipped with a minigun in the front. It's a select rate fire, 2,000 rounds at a half gain and full gain is 4,000 rounds a minute. So a bullet in every yard of a football field in a matter of seconds or so. So, you can only imagine on the receiving of that. That's the OV-1 Mohawk. They're kind of neat, and the pilots sit side by side. Uh, this another Huey taking off, going somewhere. How many years were you over there? One year. One year and a day. One year and a day I was there. That was plenty, right? That was enough. Yeah. There's some guys that would re-up and uh, do a second tour. Okay, this is a strange bird. This is CH-54. It's a flying crane. They can lift about 20,000 pounds over there in Vietnam. Uh, unlike the Chinook, which only lift about 10,000. 
the crane could lift the Chinook uh, up out of the, you know, re if you Chinook got shot down or something like that, they'd send in a crane to f pick it up. That's a caribou. That's a fixed wing aircraft. And this, I think the center, there, yeah, see there's a Phantom Jet right there. And he did just rain to run. You can see the puff of smoke on the left there. And they are awesome. It's just unbelievable when they make a run. So, he's got duct tape up there. I don't know what he's taping up a hole on the... Uh, we've got shot or something like that. Sometimes you can... If you get, get hit, why well, you just put duct tape on it and keep flying. Oversimplification of what's happening, but... You can do that. This is in the field someplace. I don't know where this was. Okay, so there's, we're obviously moving some Vietnamese from one place to another. Um, don't remember where that was. But we, we moved the whole village, including all their animals. We put yeah. some of them on the inside. We had, <laughs> we had goats and pigs, and you'd put a sling down and you'd haul a water buffalo underneath. You didn't want to haul those inside. They were too big for hauling inside. And if you did, they don't fly real good, and they get air sick, and then they go from both ends. Yeah. That's a mess inside the helicopter. Don't know what that is. But we would sling load things like howitzers. That looks like it might be an ammo sling, where you have 105 uh, howitzer uh, slings. It's easy to load it underneath because it's instantly balanced because it's right in the middle on the hook. When you load it inside you got to worry about where you put the things inside front to back so you got a nice even load. So yeah it's a push-pull. Got a, It's a civilian conversion. It's an Air Force plane. They put uh, guns on it after a while I guess. Uh, I didn't see it when I was there but These are pictures of Saigon and the river. Um, I think there's a, further on there's some pictures of, uh, oh, that's an army mule. Uh, there's a group of uh, Huey Cobra now. So you see this is red, you can't see it real well, but the first helicopter's got uh, yeah, there he goes. He's got a red canister. That means that uh, they had some KIAs. There's a group of Chinooks coming in. Uh, so they'd make a pass past the, uh, the company area if they had, you know, had some successful kills for, for the uh, for the Cobras and the Hueys are on the on the ground. That's a group of Chinooks going somewhere, coming back from somewhere. That's actually Geron uh, Geronimo uh, Group 205th. It's kind of neat flying together like that. And there's another group of Hueys coming back from something, going someplace. Were you a little safer in large groups? Oh, not necessarily. So that's a that's a that's a guy. He's not got shot down. They're just putting a, some. It's a, it's a oil into the into the exhaust. Of the helicopter makes a bunch of smoke. It's quite an effect. Yeah, it's an effect thing.
So to get some of these pictures, I'm standing on top of what these call what we call revetments, and that's where the helicopter gets parked at night. If you get rockets and mortars, it's supposed to prevent damage to helicopters. Hit the revetment instead of the helicopter. Didn't do much good up at Gucci where they blew them all up, but that's another story. And here's This is a handheld camera and it's pretty, it's not too jumpy com considering that, you know, you don't really have anything to hold on to, you know, to keep it s smooth. And flying in a helicopter couldn't have been smooth either. No, you bounce around a little bit. It's not bad, but sometimes it gets a little annoying. I don't remember what these pictures are. Probably... Well, actually, I don't know. Okay, that's uh, that's part of Saigon. We were stationed about 28 clicks north of Saigon. Click being a kilometer. Um, sometimes it's neat to see the, the delta. It's just... Uh, an incredible amount of water, water around uh, Saigon because it's all the Mekong Delta and they're just rivers and things. Now that's an old French fort type uh, thing. Uh, the French did their, uh, when they were there uh, before, it was French Indochina at one time and they had a lot of Michelin rubber plantations which are just gigantic. This hundreds and hundreds of acres rubber trees and you they're straight and in line. They're kinda of interesting to see. Favorite place for the Viet Cong to hide. Because they were so huge. Don't see anything significant there. Just These pictures that I took are pretty much unedited. I didn't. That's kind of what it looked coming into a, the airfield. And you see all the... Yeah, that's Fuloy. Was this 8mm film? Yeah, this is Super 8. Super 8. Yeah, that's our company area right there. Top of the picture was a flight line. Flight line mean that that's where the helicopter is. That's kind of a quick show. He's doing 190 miles an hour there. <laughs> Not too bad. Not bad at all. Instruments. That has all changed. The new helicopters is. I think I took that picture because of the difference in the polluted water entering the the clear water of the the, the river. Tons and tons of little corrugated roof shanties where the people lived. It was just, it was almost uh, disheartening to see how third world country that really was. In some areas, it's just amazing. Okay, this is Tansanut Air Base. That's a, that's a, a military version of a civilian, uh, I think that's a Cessna. That's another plane taken out. We had sat down in Saigon to pick up some parts and I stayed with the helicopter. That's an uh, OV-1 Mohawk taken off. So I just sat there and took pictures of planes taken off. That's a 128 Caribou. This is water buckets in action. 
I made some parts for this water bucket and they put out fire. They're trying to put out a fire as a test thing. Two buckets and I think they hold like eight or nine hundred gallons in each bucket. How heavy would that be? Oh boy, eight pounds to the gallon. Um, so that's what it takes to put a blade on. You gotta let's okay. use truly back to the camera, but and then you put the pin in there. And Those pins are huge. Yeah, so that yeah. Changing blades. Now this is changing blade. Oh no, this one's uh, we're changing the aft vertical shaft. This is really not a normal thing. We had a problem with the leaking oil seal, and we had to take that whole vertical shaft out, put the oil seal on the bottom, push the uh, vertical shaft down and in through into the top of the aft transmission, and some of that is so close quarters you can't even see the bolt that you're putting in there because you can't see it. There's too many other things in the way. It's a ticklish little deal, and especially doing it in the field with just a, a crane on the back of a deuce and a half truck. But that's what you did. That's a pretty hefty thing. It's uh, That's the keynote for your aft rotor head, is that vertical shaft, because the rotor blades sit on top of the aft. It sits down in there, I think. Well, I think you'll see it go all the way down. Do those rotor blades tilt as well? Yes. And they have, there's a little back and forward shuffle to them. Not much. A couple inches though. But you can see that it's reasonably easy to access the bolts and stuff to hold it in place. And there's a special adapter to put on a crane hook there to hold the end of the vertical shaft. That vertical shaft doesn't turn very fast. Rotor blades, it's 230 rotor RPM is what you get out of it. Uh, you can put a torque wrench on it to tighten the bolt. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty long torque wrench. Yes. I think it's about... Yeah, that's the torque wrench. Oh my gosh. It's a, yeah, there's a torque multiplier on there. It's about 800 foot-pounds of torque to tighten those bolts. That's a little bit more than your 20-pound <laughs> torque wrench for your lug nuts for your car. A little bit worse gig yeah. if a uh, bolt here well, comes off. Yeah. Uh, uh, just kind of show around the... That's the repair area.